Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Please don't forget to stay connected, let us know what you like, and help us out on Patreon if you can. We appreciate you. The biggest thing in the space industry this week was the second integrated flight test of Starship. If you've seen the last few lessons, you know some of the problems that can occur when you fly a multi-engine spaceship. The Starship booster has a total of 33 Raptor 2 engines. The Raptor 2 is much more powerful than the 1.5, and 200 kilograms lighter. Its components and wiring have also been simplified. Here is the main fuel valve, and this is the cooling jacket for the nozzle. Here is the oxygen turbo pump, and the methane turbo pump. Here you can see the oxygen intake, and the methane intake. Combining the excellent work of his dirt and every day, we can see inside. Keep this in mind as we watch a different view of starship separation, made available by SpaceX. We said that we think these abrupt maneuvers cause too much sloshing of propellant in the booster and cause the turbo pumps to ingest gas bubbles, causing them to flame out or explode. Now let's look at how this would happen. Here we see the Starship booster from the side. Here is the common dome separating the methane up here from the oxygen down here. The oxidizer to fuel ratio of a Raptor is about 3.5 to 3.77 to 1. And the density of liquid oxygen is about 1,140 to 1,250 kilograms per cubic meter. While the cryogenic methane is about 450 to 494 kilograms per cubic meter, depending on the temperature. We need more oxygen mass than methane mass, but since oxygen is denser, the tanks end up almost the same size. And since they are stored at the same temperature, about 90 Kelvin or minus 183 degrees centigrade, it's about minus 297 Fahrenheit, you can have a common dome without insulation. Here we see that the common dome is shaped like a big funnel. That will help keep the fuel from sloshing too much away from the downcomer feed here. Then the downcomer transits the oxygen tank and connects here at the center of the thrust puck. Then these fuel feed lines take methane to all of the Raptor engines. The three center engines are fed here. So the downcomer acts like a large header tank for the methane fuel. But the rest of the thrust puck is pretty flat. That means there is no funnel effect to keep the liquid oxygen from sloshing away during these relatively high G maneuvers. And as we pointed out, there are no slosh or vortex baffles. Remember this thing is 70 meters or about 230 feet tall. This is a 25 story building rotating this fast. That means while the engines might have had enough fuel to relight, the liquid oxygen may not have settled and an ingested gas bubble into the oxygen turbo pump would blow it apart or cause it to fail. Other engines might not light up at all, and then when they try to restart again, there might be too much propellant in the thrust chamber, causing the entire engine to explode in a hard start. The big flashes you see are almost certainly engines detonating. Now some have said that SpaceX did not activate the flight termination system, and that the booster blew itself apart, perhaps by a shockwave from this last explosion coming up the downcomer, overpressurizing the methane tank, and blowing it apart. Remember that there are two ways the FTS can activate. By SpaceX if they turn a key and push a button, or at least I hope it's a two-step system, or by the booster exceeding a preset limit. This would be deviating outside its approved flight path, or the loss of all propulsion. If we watch closely up here again, we clearly see the FTS explode prior to the booster coming apart. CSI Starbase is about to have an awesome video about all this soon. Everyone please subscribe to their channel and watch it. We'll compare notes later. There has also been much speculation that damage to the Starship quick disconnect indicates possible damage to the Starship connection here, and that this might have been the source of an oxidizer leak, rather than damage to the underskirt area as I surmised. Many of you pointed out that the center three engines on the Starship were gimbaled out as far as they could go, and therefore there shouldn't be much blowback into the Starship skirt area. I disagree. These engines only gimbal about 15 degrees, and they would be firing out against the sides of the vacuum engines here. 
and while they have an exit point here, I think their exhaust would be constrained and focused somewhat by the exhaust of the vacuum raptors, enough to cause a greater effect on the booster than SpaceX expected. I think this is why the booster suffered about 1.75 negative Gs, and I think that all this stuff up here suffered some blowback damage, even though I'm sure it had protective coverings over it. That being said, maybe this all worked fine, and it was a leak from the quick disconnect mating port that caused the loss of oxidizer. But then what caused this sudden outgassing? The engines aren't shutting off, but we have a lot of outgassing with the engine still working. I think there was damage between the skirt and the thrust puck that caused the oxygen loss, or a fire started from the blowback and caused something to burn through. Now I thought there might have been an engine explosion on the starship, but unless this telemetry is inaccurate, all engines went out at the same time. Now unless the explosion took them all out, which is extremely unlikely, that would lead me to believe that it was just an oxidizer leak preventing starship from making its trajectory which would have caused it to come down somewhere other than where it was supposed to. No one wants that, and SpaceX turned the key. By the way, I thought the observer in the Florida Keys had said that he saw the entire starship spinning before the flight termination system activated. But the images I see are just the nose cone with the forward flaps spinning. Maybe I misunderstood. Somebody out there help us out. It will be interesting to see what their full accident report tells us. Let us know what you think, and stay safe. Have a great weekend at Astro Proterra.